we are all in different stages of our growth in the Lord. Some of us are painfully aware of that which we have not yet overcome. Just when we think we've reached some sort of momentum, life throws us a curveball from out of nowhere and we are dumbfounded by how we react. And this calls for repentance over and over to the point where we almost feel, what is the worth of me repenting when I'm going to do it all again anyway? And exasperation sets in and we lose the fight within to go on. It is in this critical moment where three voices will come your way. The first, the enemy. Jumping at the opportunity to catch you at your weakest, he will make use of your despair to drag you down in misery with words such as, See, you are never going to get it right. You might as well enjoy it. Or, see how you have disappointed him. You will never be as holy and approved as so and so. Or, what you are doing is not working. Give up. He's after all the accuser of the brethren, just doing his job. And the next voice, sometimes louder than the first, is your own voice generated by your own thoughts of either insecurity or depression. All the enemy had to do is to stand before the white canvas of your thoughts and make one tiny brushstroke of his foul lies. And with great passion, you grab the paintbrush from him saying, step aside, I can do better. And off you go painting yourself all black and producing a picture of your thoughts that speaks of despair, anger, depression and so much sadness over your state. Some may spend hours on this painting, whilst others even days. Each day the strokes become bolder and harsher, representing the resentment you are building up towards yourself for being such a loser or fake, hating yourself with each stroke. The third voice is drowned by these loud thoughts and only once you have settled and calmed down do you hear him speak. It was Jesse Penn Lewis that said, truth is everything as God sees it. And this lies at the heart of your sanctification process. It only matters how he sees it. That especially includes how you see yourself. How great would it not be if we could only extend the patience towards ourselves as he does every day. He promised us that he will finish the work in us. We think that there is a certain appointed time that he must complete this work, the sooner the better. But he's never in a hurry, especially when he's busy with his masterpiece. He will continue to work in us and through us, even during the tribulation, even that he will use to finish the work in us. No matter how big or small, he knows what we can handle. He is in control. He knows exactly what will happen. And he already sees the finished product. As an artist, I can use myself as an example. And when I work on a painting, I can already see the canvas in its finished state even before I have made one stroke. And he tells us, whilst you were a sinner, I died for you. Meaning, he did not even start the work in us, and he already considered our value of such that he bought us with his blood. Think about that. I don't see what I paint in its stages. All I have in mind in front of my view when I see the canvas is the finished product. And I'm aware of what needs to be done, but what motivates me is the finished product. He sees us as the finished product. He sees our hearts that are perfect towards him, the hearts that long for him to finish the work in us, and the hearts that love him in such devotion. That is perfect towards him. And this is what he seeks. He doesn't seek a bride that is not necessarily struggling. struggling. He seeks one who loves him with all her heart. And that's you. That's all you need to know. It took Rembrandt three years to finish the night watch. We are reminded in scripture that a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. We would like the masterpiece of our lives to be three days and it feels like three thousand years. Apparently Rembrandt's night watch will never be sold because it's considered priceless. Yet we are the kings of king's jewels. We are his peculiar treasure 
and he has bought us with something far and beyond money. And yet he, who is priceless, the darling of heaven, was bought with 30 shekels. How precious we are to him that we are not bought with money, but with his blood. Will he ever give up on us? Never. He bought us to perfect us. And even if everybody, including ourselves, decided to give up on us, he never will. He has set his love on us. Ephesians 2 verse 10 tells us, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So be patient. The master is working. Thank you.